back to the attachment point news roundtable. I got John Moreland with Smarter Risk. It, it's not often. I hope you don't mind me saying we get to help kick off a product, but today, you know, we get to help. You know, eat a little bit in the launch of something pretty cool. Thanks for joining us, John. How are you? Yeah, thanks for having me, Brett. Appreciate it. I'm excited to talk about this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll give my best little quick synopsis, and then we'll we'll let you unpack it, and then uh, kind of tell us what you get into. Um, yeah, so John's background, risk management, creating risk management, you know, programs for, you know, large businesses. And then we're, we get to talk about Smarter Risk today, a new platform for small businesses to create mis- risk management tools that, you know, usually be reserved for the bigger guys with the crazy paychecks and the, you know, the letters on the building, you know, but this helps everybody get that. Yeah, for sure. So um, I guess I, I'll just start with kind of our, our our quick pitch. So what we've built is it's an application, a self-serve app that um, automates the assessment, reporting, and development of safety and risk control programs. And so who this is really for is it's really for the small business owner to empower them to qualify for their best insurance rates. And this also enables the insurance carriers um, to offer their most competitive pricing. So that's kind of in a nutshell what we're trying to accomplish. So, you know, I make no, I don't hide it. I work on like micro business, small business, everything's you know pretty off the shelf. But I know as you kind of go north of, you know, $50,000 premiums and decent accounts, you know, they'll get points with underwriters. They'll do things to kind of negotiate down, you know, rates. Um, maybe for the small business folks or the kind of smaller agents like myself, maybe you could kind of unpack a little bit of your background and, you know, what you're doing with the tools to help those business owners get those great rates. Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess maybe a little bit of my background will help connect the dots. So I started my career in 2004 with ISO, Insurance Service Office, which is now very risk. I spent my first five years there, five years there <clears throat> and uh, I was fortunate enough to be part of a mentorship program. And uh, what they did at that time was they took a new risk consultant and they put them with an industry expert, which was really great. Mine was Bruce Simon, a uh, great guy. And so I learned under him for five years. I then moved on and spent seven years doing uh consulting independently. And this was primarily focused on small middle market. So this was workers comp, property liability, and uh, small fleet, a little bit of DOT. Um, but yeah, so I, I did that. I really enjoyed my time there, but there were some frustrations. I think for me, there were really two things that stood out during that time period. One was I often was asked by, you know, the average business owner, hey, John, you've given me this list of recommendations, but I have no idea how to comply with them. Can you help me? And my response was always, well, no, that's not really what the insurance carrier pays us to do. We just, we're just paid to tell you what's wrong. And so that was always frustrating. And the other part was uh, I was never around long enough to see, did they implement those recommendations? Were they successful? Um, And those sorts of things. So for me, it felt like a lot of theory. And uh, as it turns out, I had an opportunity to go work with some businesses and actually apply that theory. Uh, And so just go in and apply good risk management principles and I took over one company's safety program, and in about 15 months, I saved them a quarter of a million dollars on their insurance, which was about an 80% reduction. Uh, and then I worked with another company, and we I was part of a team there, but we saved them a little over $2 million. And, you know, it's just the, the thing is, when you apply these things, they do actually work. If you try to control your risk, I always tell people, and they laugh, um, you know, the easiest way to get inexpensive insurance is don't have claims. And they laugh at that, but I'm like, no, I'm really serious. Like, put controls in place so you don't have incidents, so mm-hmm. you don't have claims, so you, you don't end up paying those those higher insurance rates. So, um, And so that brought me to where I am today. So I put together a team, and uh, I wanted to build an app that was basically going to do the same thing for small business owners. So we had to make it really fast and really simple. And uh, I think we've accomplished that. So we'll we'll see. I'll let the, the market be the judge. Yeah, exactly. And you guys built it yourselves. I hope you don't mind me saying like kind of, you know, bootstrap so far, built a small business, kind of got yourself out the gate, which is really cool and admirable, especially these uh, choppy waters and startup and Silicon Valley big times. Oh, yeah, um, SAS is <laughs> SAS isn't going anywhere though. Now we're, it's rocky right now, especially in the fundraising part. But, you know, I was listening to Jason Limpkin talk the other day from Saster, and he's like, look, SAS isn't going anywhere. Uh, even in a downturn, companies are looking to automate. They're looking mm-hmm. more for more efficiencies. And so I actually think this might be a great time for us to launch because we've got a product. Um, and I'll talk about this maybe a little bit more later, but uh, we've got a product that scales. So and it's it's choppy waters right now. People are kind of more open when there are choppy waters that are listing more. I kind of find it, you know, on smart choice side, people just don't have their traditional resources or answers right now. So they're, yeah. you know, more open minded than usual. You know, it seems like. Yeah, I, I think so. And, you know, 
the market and depending on how old you you are, I've been through this numerous times. I've seen mm -hmm. this happen. Um, you know, we had the dot com, then we had the mortgage crisis, mm -hmm. and so we, we're kind of getting used to these kind of boom and bust cycles from, from the Fed. Um, and this happens, and you just have to ride them out. They're going to end yeah. eventually. A lot of the malinvestment, a lot of the bad investments that were made, are going to get cleared out. Um, and then the the, the capital is going to uh, start cranking out again. It has to, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we 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 need. Um, we need businesses to invest in. So I don't think that's going anywhere. No, I think it's definitely part of it. This is my first time doing it around like the tech scene a little bit. You know, when I got out of college, it was like great recession, trying to sell copiers, then doing office moves. And we're literally just clearing out like floors of cubicles as the old companies had let a bunch of people go in LA. That was like the first two years. Um, so yeah, I think you're right. I think we're somewhat used to this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll get through it. It's going to be, I think it will be a, probably a, a tough couple of years, but then we'll we'll bounce back out of it. So Yeah, but I mean, the tools like you're creating are great. And I love that technology sort of helps things sort of proliferate, digitizes what wasn't digital before, kind of helps the economies kind of go down to where everybody gets the advantages. And I think okay. too, like we, you know, we sort of, I don't want to say abstract this stuff, but it's pretty cool. I mean, at the end of the day, you're helping people be more safe. You're helping people save money. Um not to go back to smart choice too much, but if we help somebody make an extra fifty, hundred thousand dollars, these are small businesses. That's you know, another employee or two, you know, you help somebody save a quarter million bucks, that's a few more hands on deck to make the company stronger. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And that, that's the one thing I used to always preach at, at these different uh, organizations was, look, you can keep spending money on insurance or we could spend money elsewhere where we need it, like hiring people or mm -hmm. a new fleet or whatever it is that, that we need. So we can uh, always use those resources in other places. So and, you know, this is not, not to um, I guess I want to include the carriers here. This is great for the carriers, too, mm -hmm. because the the lower the loss ratios are, the better it is for the carriers. I mean, right now we're sitting at about a 50% loss ratio for commercial insurance. So half of the premiums that 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 are um, paid, 50% of that's going out the door in, in, in claims. So um, I think this is really, and that's what we really focus on. We're trying to build a solution for all the different people involved in this transaction. And if you look at uh, insurance, uh, small business insurance, you've got the small business owner, you've got um, the carrier, the agent, um, and then sometimes you have captives or POs and mm -hmm. depending on what their particular situation is. But we really wanted a solution that benefited all of the players in that transaction. And so I think we built that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, just from my minimal experience and kind of growing up around a friend's machine shop, like what you built makes a ton of sense, pretty actionable from the ground up and stretches down. So I know we're talking about small business. What size companies do you think really fit the the aperture that either don't get the services or would you say like five to a hundred employees or, yeah, you know, it's you hard know, to I engage mean, it that way. It, it's going it, to, right now it's our best guess, but my best guess is 50 to 2000. Oh, and wow. I know 2000 sounds high because we're getting in middle market, cool. but um, it depends on how you define middle market too. But um, yeah, you know, I've worked for some companies that had several thousand employees and they had one safety person or zero. Um, so this happens quite a bit. Now that's the upper end for us. I think probably the sweet spot is going to be between 50 and 500 employees. I think that'll probably end up being our sweet spot, but who knows? We'll, we'll see. Um, when you build these things, I've got a friend of mine, um, she built a micro learning app, which is amazing. And if you don't know what that is, it's called seven taps. It's an, it's a great micro learning app. It's really cool. Cool. But you know, we were, we were having this discussion and I, we were talking about, it. I said, you know, what's funny is you don't really know how people are going to use it. You kind of, yeah. it's like a baby, you know, you release it out to the world and you're like, well, you don't know how this is going to end up. So like I said before, I, I'm willing to see what the market thinks of it and I'll let the market judge. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm a big fan of like, you can't, you can't wait for perfection. You kind of just got to get around that next bend to see what's around the next bend. And it's sort of like yeah. iterating and tacking. Uh, still never sailed, live in Newport. I want to learn at some point, but it seems like a lot of. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think with, with any startup, it, it's, it's probably like that, you know, and what we did now, we did take a slightly different approach. There were uh, some folks advising us, hey, just get out the minimal viable product, just get it out to the market as quickly as you can. And I said, with this, we need to we need to have yeah. it a little bit better. I mean, this is our MVP, but it's a really nice MVP. Yeah, it looks um, good. I really wanted to solve a problem. And, uh, you know, all our beta testers, so we field tested this. And just to give you a, a few examples of some of the beta testers, we had uh, an accountant at a machine shop. Uh, we had a lady here in town who owns several restaurants. And there's a gentleman that owns a uh, a brewery, a microbrewery cool. here. And none of these folks have any 
uh, experience in insurance, risk management, or safety. And they were all able to complete the assessment Sweet. in 15 minutes, less than 15, which Perfect. is what we were looking for. We wanted to make sure, you know, small business owners weren't going to sit at their computers for two hours and do this assessment. Yeah. So we had to make it really fast, but yet at the same time, make it robust and valuable. And uh, but one of the things they told us um, and the pot, the feedback was extremely positive. But one of the things they told us that made us rethink some of the MVP is we were originally going to just release it, the app with the assessment tool and not with what we call our smarter risk manager, which includes a policy builder and a forms library. And every single one of them told us, hey, this is great. It's wonderful. Now I understand what my problems are, but I need help solving them. So it kind of took me back to all those years meeting with small business owners and mm -hmm. them telling me the exact same thing. That's hey, John, cool. can you help me with this? I struggle with get, actually getting these programs in place, developing them, right? And so that's when we decided at that point, we uh, threw out all the code from the beta. We started from scratch. We rebuilt the assessment tool and then built at the time what we called module two. We didn't even have a name for it, which is now the, the risk manager. So That's awesome. And that's, I mean, that's bold of you too, even before getting out the gate to be willing to kind of hit a hard reset to do it right. And I do think it was right of you to get it to like a good spot before going out because in business, you don't really have multiple swings, you know, if something yeah. doesn't work or if it's not worth the time. Yeah, like, if it was B to yeah. C, I, I think you think, you know, exactly. Right, and I think you're right. I agree with you. I think if it's B to C, you do have those, you know, people tolerate a lot. Now you can take multiple swings, but when you're dealing with people's businesses and you're dealing with mm -hmm. insurance, safety, and risk management, you got to get right out of the gate. And so we wanted to get what we thought was the nicest product, uh, the, the best product we could build that would actually solve the problem. And we didn't want, you know, we didn't want to go back and reiterate a whole lot. You know, I, had a lot of experience uh, working with small businesses. So I was able to take that. I had a lot of experience working with the major carriers over all those years of consulting. So we felt like we had a good grip on what the problem was and how we needed to solve it. So um, it, it's interesting too for me in sales, you know, from past projects. Um, if you're not putting money in people's pockets, it sounds bad. It's hard to keep their attention if it's something that's kind of around the business development side. Um, so that's always oh, yeah. a challenge or something I try to stay mindful of, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and 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 two that that's that's uh, that's tough in our line of business. Like for for years, I remember one organization I worked with. It took me probably a good twelve months to convince some of the mm -hmm. leadership that we were on the right path. Now, month fifteen, it was easy. It was easy once they saw the savings. A um, intruder coming you know, in. This is Sorry. oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We got an extra special guest. <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah, with some of these, some of these businesses, it's fine. Uh, the leadership took a little while, you know, to convince, uh, but I'll give them credit. They stuck with me until they saw that turnaround. They saw those results. So these things do take time. This is not a, um, you know, a magic trick. This is not mm -hmm. like, a, hey, let's get this done quick. It does take time. Uh, but we built some software that takes away a lot of that heavy lifting. So that's cool. A lot. Well, like you said, you're coming from work experience. You're running it through real businesses. Um, you know, making sure there's tangible boots on the ground when you're coming out with a product that's going to serve as client. It's awesome. You know? Yeah. So yeah, um, we're really, we're really proud of what we built. So, um, yeah, we're very, very proud of what we built. So who should chase it down? Should business owners chase it down? Should agents chase it down for their customers? You know, all the above. Well, you know, right now, so when we, we launched March 31st and we will have early access and we can talk about that cool. in just a minute. Yeah. Um, but for right now, the the platform will be open to business owners. So okay. that's the that's the first iteration. Uh, within the second quarter, we will be releasing a program for what we call our channel partner program. It's called Arc Services. It's automated risk control, and uh, this will be exclusively available to agents, uh, PEOs, captives, and insurance carriers. Uh, and this will basically automate the assessment and reporting function for them. Nice. And, you know, if you want to have me back on uh, Q2, we can talk about some of the really cool features we got planned for that. And we do yeah. have some really cool ones planned. Um, so, but for right now, we we just will have it open for uh, small business owners. But yeah, if uh, if agents want to refer their clients and obviously they could use the report and they could use the, the assessment to help leverage uh, for, you know, when they want to quote that or bid that insurance out, uh, that'd be great. So, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, we're actually... Uh, just to, I guess we'll go right into some of the uh, uh, some of the promos, but we are allowing early access to some of the agents who have already booked one on ones and done demos nice. with me. So yeah. they're getting an email in the next couple of days, giving them instructions on how they can allow their clients in early. 
Uh, and we do have a few spots left open for that. So if there's any agents out there who say, hey, you know, I'd like my clients to have access to this too, uh, find me on LinkedIn or you can email me, john at smarterrisk.com and uh, I'll get you set up and we'll, we'll chat. Um, and it is J-O-H-N. I'm not a Jonathan. Um, so it's J-O-H-N at smarterrisk.com. Uh, either way, just get a hold of me, direct message me, and uh, I can set you up with the same thing. That's perfect. Um, and I'll, I'll make sure when we have it in the show notes, kind of website, your LinkedIn, you know, email, all that good stuff. Good, um, good deal. Yeah. And, yeah. and one of the thing I'll mention yeah. is anyone who comes in early, we're doing an automatic upgrade to the smart cool. plan. So how it works right now, if you're a single location business, you get the assessment, uh, you get the recommendations and the score for free. Uh, so it's, it's a freemium service. I don't know of any anywhere in our industry that that exists. So I think we're the first. And uh, so we're, we're offering um, as part of that program an upgrade to the smart plan. What the smart plan does is it allows the insurers to update their recommendations, which improves their score and improves their report. Mm -hmm. And we really haven't talked about the report. Um, so this will include a report. If they click a button, it'll generate a report that shows all the proactive measures they're taking to control their risk. Uh, it's really cool. It's basically a risk report. It's nicely formatted. It's all in a pretty much a narrative format. Um, but then you could use that, obviously, to share with the, the agent and, and the carrier. So that'll be a free upgrade we're giving out. Normally, it's $10 one-time fee for that. Uh, now, if they want the policy builder in the forms library, which will allow them to update the recommendations and will allow them to click a button and generate their policies, which will also include a forms library, which uh, allows them to implement all those policies, right? Gives them everything they need. Uh, that's that's a subscription product. It's $50 a month. And uh, we, we'll give them the first month of that free if they sign up for that. So. It's not bad at all. I, um, you know, it's interesting. My last stop, last job I had before kind of being independent, it was like a human capital, like consulting firm. And it was not cheap to have those folks out to do anything. And I don't know the cost and the carriers send out risk managers either, but I'm sure it's more than 50 bucks a month to, uh, you know, yeah. to have a well, visit plus create all the, you know, documents. I can't tell you how many people who say you need to charge more. And my response to them is, I want as many small business owners cool. using the platform as possible. That's what we're looking for. So our goal is just different. That's um, my goal is to, too, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's something that they can afford. It's it's at a price point where almost any business can afford mm -hmm. it. Definitely. So. No, that's cool. I'll, I'll make sure everyone can get a hold of it. And then um, if you don't mind one more time. So yeah, John Moreland, you know, LinkedIn, any other places or ways people should connect with you or find you? Uh, LinkedIn's it's about the only thing I do anymore. I'm boring. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's the best. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just LinkedIn. Um, so if anyone wants to shoot me a direct message there, connect to me on LinkedIn, send me a message and we'll chat or you can email me. But LinkedIn's the best place to get me. Cool. Perfect. All right, John. Well, looking forward to the next one and looking forward to seeing the launch. Thanks for letting uh, Insurance Nerds be a part of it. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.